What's going on everyone, Manuel here, and in today's video we're going to be doing my first impressions of the Lomo Instant Wide Camera after I took it out for some street photography in Anaheim, California. That's right, we're going to the home of the world famous Varsity Burger. As always, before we get into the heart of today's video, let's get some disclaimers out of the way. This video was not sponsored by Lomography. I went to my job and did a service. That job underpaid me for my service, and I used that money to pay for these goods because of uh, capitalism. I've also had the camera since last June, but still think it's fair to call it a first impressions video since I was pretty buzzed the first time I used it at a house show, and it's been sitting on my shelf ever since. Not a good look for me, I know, but as always, I do take these first impression videos very seriously, and I want you all to know that before going into this video. Which is why I'm standing here with uh, Luna as my witness, telling you all at home or quarantining with your Sancha that despite the film jamming up on me and the lens focus being so stiff, I needed to hit it with some TW40. I still think it's a good camera and definitely one you should consider picking up over the uh, Polaroid One Step Plus if that's what you're currently researching. This won't be a direct comparison video, but I will make some mention of why I prefer the Lomo Instant over the Polaroid One Step, just because I've shot both. If you want a more direct comparison video though, just let me know in the comments. So for this first impressions video, I will be doing a bit of street photography in Anaheim, California, uh, my hometown, which was under a shelter at home order at the time of recording this. Though people are still allowed to wander the streets for exercise as long as they practice social distancing and wear a mask. So don't come for me. I've actually been working on a I'm not sure what you'd call it, a long form time lapse of the area as uh, gentrification continues to change the landscape I grew up in. Unfortunately, I won't be able to include any portrait sessions or party style photos for this video as that I'll be really irresponsible to organize under the circumstances. But as I said earlier, I did go to that house party where I used some filters, so I will be able to comment on that after this video. I'll just be sticking to the camera by itself without extra gadgets for this photo walk though, as I'd like to save that all for the full review. I will, however, be including uh, some of my thought process as we move through the location, as well as provide some commentary on the camera, since a few of you have asked for that. Bear in mind though, uh, the nature of these first impressions videos lend themselves to opinions changing with time, so, such as life. So if you hear me say something incorrect, feel free to correct me in the comments. But just remember, it's, it's called a first impressions video. My own views could change and I could have some technical info missing. Finally, despite my demeanor on camera at the time of recording this, I just wanted to note that I was scared shitless making this video and I didn't realize how anxious I was about the current situation until I had to mentally push myself to get into the car, then to the gas station to fill up after three weeks of not doing so, and then when I finally got to the location and ended up driving around the city in circles, just trying to talk myself out of doing this video. It sounds ridiculous, I know, which is why I ended up doing this shoot after all. I realized I needed to stop being so anxious and it ended up being nice. So I apologize if the video is too long and includes some or too much personal information. I don't normally like doing that with first impressions or review videos, but I thought it was important to edit with that context in mind. I think I'm finally getting over the, you know, need to appease what's popular in the film community or YouTube and focus on what I want to create. But I'd still appreciate a like and a comment on the video just to let me know you're all on board for the ride. And with that monologue out of the way, I hope you enjoy the following. Though if you just want to skip to the first impressions by themselves, uh, there's going to be a timestamp down below um, in case you get bored at any point. But for everyone else, on to the video. And pinch this. Try a proper seal. 
When I got out of the car, my eyes immediately went to this dog with a job, but there were a few people in the way and I was trying to keep a minimum of 50 feet distance from everyone. So I decided to just go into the park first and see if the recent rain created any interesting reflections. That's when I noticed this playground that had a do not cross tape on it and I proceeded to frame the shot as though I was shooting a 50 millimeter when the Lomo instant wide is more equivalent to a 35. Whoops. Luckily, Instax film develops relatively fast compared to Polaroid, so I was able to see my mistake by the time I walked over to this volleyball court with a giant pool of water reflecting the nearby tree line. I'm still upset that photo didn't come out. As I started the shoot with just three shots remaining on this pack, it was already time to switch out. And I say that to preface this camera malfunction where the first dark slide uh, protecting the film got stuck in the camera. We'll touch on this a bit more later as it happened to me before with this camera and again later in the video. I ended up having to physically reopen the camera, jimmy the cartridge out, which was surprisingly hard to do, and then physically yank out that dark slide. Of course, this meant that the first shot on that pack was a loss, and given how rough I was trying to remove it in the first place, so was the second image. So it was down to eight shots. As the sun was coming down, I made my way towards downtown Anaheim, which I'm not really used to seeing empty at this time of day. But as I said in a previous video, I wasn't about to just snap a picture of an empty street and call it high art. No, instead I took this masterpiece because Mary and I had done a shoot here before and I miss my friends. So if you're noticing the lighting has changed from the start of the video, it's because I'm walking backwards, following my own route just to get you guys some B-roll. So you're welcome. Around this time is when I started to get a bit more comfortable about being outside. So I opted to just walk back to where I used to live and check out what else has changed in the area since I you know, last visited. As I mentioned earlier, I've been trying to work on a long-term project documenting the changes in the city and I really need to get back on it because changes here happen so fast when Disney runs the show. So funny note about this next picture, I could tell there was a couple staring at me when I was setting myself up for the shoot and I want to believe they figured out I was just some dumb YouTuber, but look at this thing. This does not say camera. And again, I had the same issue with loading the film. And again, I had to yank out that cartridge, pull out that dark slide, and waste another two shots. So hooray, eight shots again. It's like I'm shooting Polaroid originals after all.
As I said before, Anaheim has changed a lot in a few years. I bring it up because I'd like to continue updating the series and similar videos like today, just to force myself to see new ways of capturing the city that you know I lived in most of my life. Not that I think it's a problem so far, since none of you have called me out for shooting in the city again. If I may bring it back to that last point before moving on to my first impressions, the reason I chose this little path today was because it's literally memory lane for me. Every inch of what I showed today is drenched in sentiment and I could tell you stories that would make you laugh and cry. There's some real history beneath the rubble and cloud and narratives and although I'm always skeptical that I could capture that in a single frame, I hope everyone watching this tries something similar at home especially since we're under quarantine. I know we as photographers tend to dream of traveling to our ideal locations and, you know, try something of an original idea, but we never imagine what we need maybe at home where we have the ability to view a space as home rather than just another tourist destination. So try looking at your backyard as a living memory more than just, you know, another location. That's an idea I'm hoping to convey through that project on Anaheim. But moving on to the reason you actually clicked here, uh, my first impressions. I'm gonna get a bit technical, but again, this is mainly my thoughts and experiences, which are subject to change as I use this camera more. And I apologize in advance, but it's not gonna be short. So let's start with the film because that's the sole reason I picked up this Lomo Instant Wide, despite already having a Polaroid One Step Plus. This camera uses Fuji's Instax wide format, uh, which comes in color and black and white, but both of these, despite being pricey, are much cheaper than anything currently being produced by Polaroid at the time of filming. Both companies offer discounts when you purchase five packs of their color film. Polaroid comes out to be $64.99 on their website, while Instax Wide is $77 at Adorama. But remember, each box of Instax film comes with two packs, and each of those packs have 10 shots each, so you effectively have uh, 20 shots per box and Polaroid is just eight. So you're paying $65 for 40 shots, whereas you get 100 photos for $77 with Instax. The reason I am so fixated on this to start with on the first impressions video is because you need to practice with these cameras to develop any sort of skill with them. So even at their cheapest, you'd have to spend close to 150 US with Polaroid film just to get the same practice you'd get on a Fujifilm camera. And I dislike Fujifilm for basically giving the film community the cold shoulder, so that's saying something. I'll go into more detail in a comparison video if you'd like, but the last thing I want to bring up to contrast to Polaroid film is the developing times, because that was another selling point for me. As mentioned in my Polaroid One Step Plus review, I hated the long developing times that came with iType film. They're currently advertising 15 minutes and that may be the case now since the formula is constantly being worked on, but the last time I shot it was closer to 30 minutes. And I don't want to blast them too much on that since I haven't purchased any new Polaroid film in a while. So correct me if I'm wrong down below. That said, Instax film developed fast enough for me to realize if I was too far from a subject or if the camera was underexposing and allow for me to readjust before the lighting situation changed too much. So if I wanted to redo any of those earlier shots, I could have realistically adjusted within a few minutes without standing around for too long. All right, so now that I'm off that soapbox, let's move on to the actual lomography section. And again, just to preface this, if you're the type to view criticism of a camera as a personal attack, or if you're trying to reaffirm a recent purchase, please remember what I said in the beginning. I end up recommending this camera in the end. You're gonna be fine. Just breathe, okay? I, I just need to say some things about how I feel inside. 
So uh, this camera is uh, weird looking and handles just as well. It's kind of like you're holding up a small book to take a picture and it makes sense considering how large the instant wide film is, but I have to say I'm, I'm not a fan of how the shutter button is set up. It feels like if I dropped it, it would just uh, snap off. And Lomography tries to make it look nice by having this fox leatherette around the camera, uh, at least on this black edition, but it still feels like a cheap plastic camera, which shouldn't be surprising if you're familiar with Lomo. And I'm not saying that to uh, disrespect the brand. I understand these need to be built a certain way to be affordable, but this video is meant for people who may not otherwise know what to expect from this camera. I wish I could say that go-to compliment that uh, film YouTubers uh, spit out by calling the build quality tank-like, but again, this was sitting on my shelf for months and the focus ring stiffened up. That was probably due to inactivity, but what the fuck? I, again, ended up fixing up the issue with just some uh, DW40, just a little bit, uh, without damaging the camera. But as you saw in the video, I was also having problems with the film getting stuck. And I tried giving the benefit of the doubt to the camera and thought maybe it was just uh, those two packs of film that were uh, damaged or some uh, user error because that's never happened before. But then I tried it again after this video with a new pack and same thing. I actually tried looking online to see if I could fix this myself since I hate throwing shit away. It's bad enough most instant film users just chuck out their used cartridges whenever they please, uh, which I don't wanna contribute to by calling this one a loss. Unfortunately, there wasn't any information about having to clean your rollers or dislodging something internally. And surprisingly, it appears no one else online has had similar issues. And if they do, they're probably keeping quiet. So this might just be a one-time thing though. I ended up reaching out to Lomography, who I didn't tell shit to about this video or the channel because I wanted the same experience y'all would get. And it appears I'll be getting a replacement as this is a camera defect as I suspected. So I hope you didn't comment anything about how I fucked up. It was you, you fucked up. We're trying to run a channel here and you fuck up on me like this. So it's nice to know they're at least gonna help you out in case you do have any issues. Uh, even when the rest of the world is going to shit. I'll update everyone on the full review of the camera, but again, despite the negativity that was my introduction of this camera, I still recommend it if you're interested in shooting instant film because it's more about the end result than the actual product. Fuji does offer an Instax mini version of this if you're looking to further save, but I got this one as I wanted larger prints for a series on abandoned buildings. This camera may not be as eye-catching as a one-step, but if you're looking for something to capture snapshots for memory's sake, uh, rather than some more experimental stuff, this is a good choice. You can take it out without any of the extras and get shots similar to what I did today. But if you're ever feeling adventurous, there's also some color gels, uh, multi-exposure, and this uh, splitzer that lets you uh, split up and expose half the frame so you can do some interesting things. And you can also turn off the flash manually, which I know was a gripe with uh, the Fuji version of this camera, though it will turn back on once you shut the camera down, which should be a no-duh thing, but it wasn't for me. There's also a place for your uh, tripod mount, which isn't plastic and pairs nicely with this remote in case you want to, you know, take some selfies from a distance. And it's not something I've used so far, but the option is there. The lens itself is a 35 millimeter equivalent with an F8, F22 aperture lens that lacks any ability for you to switch between the two as the camera decides most things for you. Lomography's website also states your shutter speeds range from 1 25th all the way down to eight seconds. Though again, that's decided by the camera. Uh, the only control we have on the Loma wide besides the extra gadgets is uh, setting the camera to bulb mode or uh, flash you know turning the flash off uh, there is no hot shoe mount anywhere but there is a pc sync cord port um, i've never seen examples of anyone using it and i'd like to make a video on that down the road um, if anyone's interested but at the moment i am staying in my room since i'm trying really hard not to spread any viruses i may have caught on the job so that'll have to wait and a bit of a side note since i did go there 
but I am an EMT working the 911 side of things. Uh, not all that great, actually. I just wanted to say that to segue into me selling prints. Uh, I think that's borderline emotional blackmail, but mm. I know we're all struggling, but I appreciate anything um, I could get in the event I need to self-isolate away from at-risk family. I don't want to depend on my employer to help me out. Uh, it's, it's much better to ask uh, strangers online, right? And you know, as awkward as it is putting that out there, that's kind of what it's come to out here. So I'll take what I can get. But anyways, back to the camera, since these videos hmm, are helping me stay sane through this mess. All right, so before I get rudely interrupted again, lenses. Um, as I said before, the Lomo Instant Wide has a fixed 35 millimeter lens, though if you purchase the bundle with extras, there's also a 21 millimeter and close-up attachment that just says 10 centimeters, uh, both of which are screw-ons. You're SOL on the framing when it comes to the close-up attachment, so you will have to guess both your composition and focus. Uh, with the 21 millimeter lens attachment, uh, you can switch the viewfinder to uh, better aid for composition though do keep in mind the closer you are to the subject you're gonna be suffering more from parallax and i'm still new to the concept as i don't shoot range finder style cameras but from what i've read online it all comes down to the viewfinder not matching up to what the lens sees and it's not as noticeable when you're uh, shooting from a distance but it is something to be aware of when you're getting a closer. Since the viewfinder is up and to the right of the lens, I normally just try to adjust it, if I remember, which I don't normally. I believe the lens on this camera is all plastic as well, so don't expect any jaw-dropping clarity, especially when uh, the focus is a chore for both people used to SLRs or the more traditional rangefinders. The focus distance printed on here is uh, pretty vague. You got 0.6, one to two meters, and then infinity. I'm not sure if that's meant to tell you what will be in focus or how far you need to be, but it is confusing. And same as the one step, you don't really get much focusing advice besides uh, just shoot it and learn. Thanks, I hate it. I'm going to try to find a way to actually measure the focusing distance of this lens uh, by either using a piece of tape or some other method. But for now, just know it could be an issue. Uh, personally, I do still forget to focus on occasion. And though you might not think that would be an issue with an F8, F22 lens, keep in mind uh, the size of an Instax wide film is uh, larger than a 645. So bokeh is still present at that aperture and you can miss focus. Uh, what else am I missing? Oh yeah, you can adjust the exposure plus one and negative. Um, that's a pretty meh feature and it, uh, it takes four AA batteries. Uh, the film pops out of here unless you're me and it doesn't. Uh, the film counter is down here at the bottom right door. And uh, oh, uh, built-in flash. Um, it's perfect for party type photos and trash for most other situations. Uh, thankfully, this camera allows you to turn it off. Uh, you just have to remember to turn it back off if you're used to turning the camera on and off between shoots. There's also some color gels I tried uh, playing around with in the aforementioned house party when a fellow film shooter by the name of Angelica invited me to see her band play. This camera thrives in those types of situations, especially when half the people are inebriated and doubly so at weddings, which, you know, I had a real kick out of when I was able to just, you know, pop one out and give it to the guests. Um, they really enjoyed that. So if you're a wedding photographer, maybe uh, try picking one of these up um, as a nice little party trick. And pro tip, if you're gonna try to correct them um, that this isn't a Polaroid camera, just, just stop. They're still gonna call it one when they sober up, so just uh, move on. So to wrap this up, although this camera feels cheap and I just showcased a defective version, I still cannot recommend this camera enough if you'd like to get some larger prints with some uh, fun features. This doesn't have the same manual control as the One Step Plus. You can't choose your aperture or shutter speed, but everything you can control has a button or filter you can attach and is much more tangible. Uh, it's much better than having to pull out your phone and taking a moment to sync up. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm still going to use that One Step Plus for my more experimental photos because I love the results I got in that Santa Monica video, but 
For when I just want to shoot and capture memories, uh, this is gonna be my go-to. Hell, I, I might even get that Instax Mini just to save a bit more cash on film. Uh, the colors are safe and don't remind you too much of that lo-fi look a Lomography has built itself on, but the camera does inspire you to be adventurous and take chances you wouldn't be able to with the standard Instax camera. Uh, so that alone is worth the price of admission. And I say that because even with the issues I had today, Lomography, for all the criticism they get for being a hipster brand, um, at least try to make new cameras and obviously aren't afraid to build a system around an outsider's product, uh, just as long as everyone gets excited to shoot film and capture memories, you know, why not? But on that note, I'm gonna wrap this video up since I'm pretty sure I went over that 30 minute mark a while ago and lost the majority of you. So thank you if you're still watching, you're, you're my favorites. And uh, we won't tell the others, but it's you and only you right here. Feel that. So please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, uh, if you'd like to see more videos like this. I'm not gonna attach any affiliate links down below, but if you do wanna support me, again, there will be a link to my website where you can pick up some prints. Um, with that, um, until the next one, keep uh, chasing that light.